Senator Obama and I have fundamental differences on economic policy, and many of them concern tax rates. He supports proposal to raise top marginal rates paid by small business and families, to raise tax rates on those with taxable incomes of more than $32,000, raise capital gains taxes, raise taxes on dividends, raise payroll taxes, and raise estate taxes. That's a whole lot of raising. And for millions of families, individuals, and small businesses, it will mean a lot less money to spend, save, and invest as they see fit. For my part, I believe that in a troubled economy, when folks are struggling to afford the necessities of life, higher taxes are the last thing we need. The economy isn't hurting because My friends, the economy isn't hurting because workers and businesses are undertaxed. Raising taxes eliminates jobs, hurts small businesses, and delays economic recovery. Under my plan, we will preserve the current low rates as they are, so businesses large and small can hire more people. We'll double the personal exemption from $3,500 to $7,000 for every dependent in every family in America. We'll offer, we'll offer every individual and family a large tax credit to buy their health care so employers can spend more on wages and workers don't lose their coverage when they change jobs. We'll lower the business tax rate so American companies open new plants and create more jobs in this country not going overseas. Now, there are honest differences as well about the growth of government, but surely we can find common ground in the principle that government cannot go on forever spending recklessly and incurring debt. Government has grown by 60% in the last eight years because the Congress and the administration have failed to meet their responsibilities and Americans are angry about it. And they should be. And next year, total federal expenditures are predicted to reach over $3 trillion. That's an awful lot for us to be spending when this nation is already more than $9 trillion in debt or more than $30,000 in debt for every citizen of this country. That's a debt our government plans to leave for your children and mine to bear. And that's not only a failure of financial oversight, it's a moral obligation. There will come a time when the road reaches a dead end, and it won't be today's politicians who suffer the consequences. It'll be American workers and their children who are left with worthless promises and multi-trillion dollar debts. We cannot let that happen. As president, I promise you, I'll work with every member of Congress, Republican, Democrat, and Independent, who shares my commitment to reforming government and controlling spending and removing the corruption that exists in our nation's capital today. I'll order a top-to-bottom review of every federal program, department, and agency. We're going to demand accountability. We're going to make sure failed programs aren't rewarded and that discretionary spending is going where it belongs to essential priorities like job training, the security of our citizens, and the care of our veterans.